Alright, we've got our basic floor slab in place. Now, I want to make this a little more interesting. We're going to take the east side of our slab, and we're going to give it kind of a little beveled sort of bay window kind of look. Now, when I say east, I'm orienting the compass points on the top viewport. So, if you glance up here to top, the top of the top viewport is going to be north, the bottom of it will be south, and of course the left side will be west and the right side will be east. So, let's take a look at that. There's going to be a couple of things we need to do. First off, I'm not really a big fan of having a work light that doesn't actually reach every corner of our level. So let's fix that first. I'm going to select my light here in the perspective viewport, and I want to open up its properties because we need to increase this light's radius. You can actually visualize the radius here in the top view as this great big circle. I'm going to press F4 to open up its properties. We're going to expand the light category, expand light component, come down to point light component, and you'll see a property labeled radius. Grab that and just set that up to something like, oh, let's just try 1600. And that's still giving us a little bit of fall off at the corners, but generally it's big enough to encompass the entire level, which is great. So with that done, we can go ahead and close out our point light properties. However, if we wanted to play this level, we would need to rebuild lighting. Now, I'm not planning on playing anytime soon. I just thought I'd keep that in mind. So if you want to jump back in, make sure you do click the build lighting or at least build all button before you do so. Now, I'm going to take my red builder brush and I'm going to move it completely out of the way. So I'm just going to slide it right off the side with my translation widget and we're just looking at this additive brush. What I'd like to do is take this side, so this is the east side of our slab, and we're just going to pull it out a little bit and get kind of a nice beveled edge here on the side. This is going to require that we make use of geometry mode. Geometry mode is a special mode that we can put the editor in that allows us to perform modeling operations on BSP brushes. Things like extrusions, moving around points. If you're unfamiliar with the concepts of 3D modeling, it may seem just a tiny bit alien to you at first. But once you see how it works, you're going to find it's really, really easy to do. Now, a couple of things, though. If we take a look down here in the lower right-hand corner of my view, way down at the bottom in the console bar, you'll see that my drag grid settings are currently set to 32. We can confirm that by going under view, coming over to the drag grid, and you'll see that 32 is currently checked. If you want to move things around to the same snapping degree that I am, make sure that you're also using a drag grid of 32, and do not disable your drag grid. Make sure that this checkbox is always on, and a little checkbox down here inside the console bar as well. Now, if we take a look, now that I've said that, if we take a look at this additive brush here in the top viewport, you'll see that it is not quite lining up with the grid. If I zoom in on it, it's actually about halfway across a grid space. I'd like to fix that. It's very easy to do here in the top viewport. Just zoom in on one of the corners. Now, I zoomed in by holding down left and right mouse button and just dragging that corner toward me. I'm going to select this brush and then take any one of the corners and just right click on it. And what that does is that snaps the brush right to the grid, which is nice and handy if you're trying to get things to line up very nicely. So now as we zoom out, everything is nicely snapped over to the grid, which is good. Now, let's switch over and change the shape of this brush. Now, before I even do anything, I want to mention this. What I'm about to do is really only one possible solution to getting the shape that we want. What I'm going to do is make an extrusion out the side of our of our little floor slab here and then pull the vertices in. You could make some uh, extra edges in your floor if you're familiar with modeling operations and then pull the resultant vertices out. We could even create an entirely separate additive brush to handle this kind of beveled area for us. I'm just showing you one possible method. The more you work with UDK, the more you're going to realize there's a lot of different solutions to any given problem. All right, so coming over here, let's go ahead and select our brush. Now I'm going to fly my perspective view over here to the east side and I'm going to switch to unlit mode just to make things a little bit easier to see. Now as I do that take note that my additive brush is now no longer aligned with the CSG of the world. That's because we actually moved the brush to snap it to the grid and we haven't yet rebuilt our geometry. So I'm just gonna click build geometry close out my error window and now everything lines up just fine. Now that I've done that, though, let's go ahead and do a couple of things. Here in my perspective view, we're going to change the view mode over to brush wireframe. 
So that gets rid of the CSG, just make sure everything lines up nicely and all we see is our brush. Then I'm going to switch us over to geometry mode. Now as soon as I do that, our brush slab becomes nice and filled in. We can actually see little polygons that are keeping us from being a completely transparent wireframe. Now while in geometry mode, we can select polygon faces, we can select polygon edges, which requires really precision selection, but there you go, there's a polygon edge, and we can select vertices. Be really careful, though, that you don't accidentally nudge these things, because you can use your translation widget here to move these components around. We could grab a vertex and slide it around and change the shape of our slab, which we're going to do, just don't do it yet. Now, I'm going to select this polygon here on the edge of my surface. It would be a good idea to make sure that you do have the east edge or the east face selected and you can verify that by looking up here in the top viewport and if you see your translation widget over here on the right hand side you're right where you want to be now I'm going to come over to my geometry tools window which popped up as soon as we enter geometry mode and I'm gonna click the extrude radio button now in extrude mode we have a couple of different things we could do we could just use the translation widget and that would pull out some more geometry for us but I'm gonna do this by the numbers so it'll be a little bit easier to follow along come down to your settings inside geometry tools set your length to 288 leave your segments at 1 and click apply So that creates a little tiny extrusion and you can see what we've done if we pull back in perspective so pretty easy so far now let's take a look at the top view I just want to focus on the top view for a moment as a matter of fact let's take the top view and click the maximize viewport button which is on the far right of the viewport toolbar and I'll move my geometry tools window kind of out of the way. Now, I want to take the vertices of this little extruded area. In fact, let me just deselect so it'll be a little bit easier for everybody to see. We're going to take these two corners and bring them toward each other just so that things line up and look a little bit cleaner. So let's grab this vertex up here at the top right corner. And all I'm going to do is use my translation widget to pull this down 288 units. Now, if you take a look at the bottom of your view as you're moving, you can actually see some numbers change to indicate that you've moved it 288 units. If you don't want to do that, really all you're looking for is a nice 45 degree angle from this vertex down to this vertex. So if you see it nicely cutting through the diagonals of your grid, so you see how it just cuts right through the center of those grid spaces, that's exactly what you want. So let's do the same thing here in the opposite direction. I'm going to come down to the lower right hand corner and we'll slide this vertex up and once we get that nice 45 degree angle, which we don't just yet, right there. That's right where we want to be. So you can see a nice perfect diagonal leading right to that vertex. So there we go. We have our little bay window effect. Now, once we have the shape that we're looking for, let's demaximize the viewport, verify in perspective that this is what we want, and it is. Let's get out of geometry mode before we bump something or change the shape again. Now, if I switch back over, to lit or unlit mode you'll see that this change has not been updated in our world geometry so the next thing we need to do is make sure that we click the build geometry button so let's go ahead and close out our error window and there we go we have an entirely new type of surface created very quickly with geometry mode now that was really kind of slow hand holding once you get the hang of geometry mode you can create a surface like this in a matter of seconds so at this point, I want you to go ahead and save your level one more time, and then we'll just move on from here. So that's going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.